Hello, everyone, and welcome to this Telet Centurion webinar, Leveraging AI for Advanced Industrial Visual Inspection. I'm Amanda Slink, the Head of Global Events here at Telet, and I will be moderating today's event. Um, let's quickly get to know our speakers. To explain this topic today, I am pleased to be joined by two speakers. First, we have Dela De La Rosa, VP of DeviceWise Industry 4.0 at Telet Centurion. And second, we have Dr. Lanier Zamir, Field Application Engineer, AIIND, at Telet Centurion. Now, just before I hand it over to David to start our presentation, I have just a few quick reminders. I would like to remind our audience that we will have time to answer some questions at the end of our presentation. You may simply submit a question by posting in the questions box located near the bottom of your screen. Also, please be sure to check out the resources section uh, for some additional information um, on today's topic. And finally, we will send out this replay link uh, to all attendees at the conclusion of the webinar. And with that, David, I will hand it over to you to start our presentation today. Well, thank you, Amanda. A little bit about Telet first. Uh, Telet Centurion is uh, at the core of the Internet of Things, known as IoT. We offer products and services for small to large companies that require mission-critical connectivity, along with security, scalability, and of course, enterprise-grade performance. Telet uh, Centurion uh, IoT modules and products, IoT connectivity, and platform services enable end-to-end -end IoT deployments and solutions from the sensor to the apps, so sensor to CEO. You can use our modules, connectivity, and platforms completely independently or bundled together as an integrated in a integrated end-to-end -end solution, reducing complexity, risk, and more importantly, time to market. Uh, instead of uh, trying to do your own custom code, homegrown uh, solutions. Now let's talk about device-wise AI visual inspection. It's a comprehensive uh, set of products that allow for, uh, for uh, enterprises to leverage the new technologies for visual inspection. The key elements are no coding required. Simply point and click to build visual models, application logic, inspection rules, and, uses, and user interfaces all integrated into a single platform. It's very easy to deploy. Uh, it's one or two clicks, installation scripts, very scalable, deploys on PC servers or enterprise-grade servers with the GPUs, on-premise or on cloud systems in minutes. It scales very easily from Windows-based tablets NVIDIA Jetson-based systems to very large enterprise-grade servers uh, with GPUs. DeviceWise has a tremendous uh, amount of uh, connectivity options, including P like communications with PLCs, uh, data collection devices, CNCs, torque tools, robots, and vision systems, all built into the one product. We support uh, Genicam, RTSP uh, video cameras, Zebra tablets, um, Honeywell, Samsung Android devices are our cameras. We also work on embedded systems like the Boston Dynamic Spot robot that sometimes you see on YouTube. Uh, uh, iOS-based devices like an Apple iPhone or industrial cameras with GPU, such as the 80-Link Neon, which is based on a Jetson Nano uh, platform. The device-wise uh, platform has built-in connectors for business systems. IBM Maximo, for example, uh, you could create work orders with us. It's built-in. SAP, 
Microsoft SQL, any relational database, Azure, AWS, all this is built in into the platform. So to configure and deploy total end-to-end -end solution in hours, no tons of custom coding uh, required. Visual inspection made easy, that's our mantra here. How could it be used? Quality, for example, visually detect defects in station, enabling immediate repair and identification. Verify that the correct part is being installed, for example. Verify that the part is installed correctly. Detect defective components prior to installation or missing components. Um, visually detect worn damaged goods uh, in need for replacement. Detect impending parts failure via infrared inspection, for example. Verify equipment is properly configured. Inspect for energy loss via FLIR or infrared inspection. Logistics and safety, immediate feedback to operator to improve skills. Provide feedback on which operators need additional training, for example. Detect safety issues, spills, safety gear, people in restricted zones, perform inventory count, counting, verify kitting packs, have the correct parts and count. Device-wise, AI visual inspection is a full system, all in one. You train and deploy the visual models in just a couple of hours. The visual model training is performed prior to deployment of the solutions. Models can be automatically updated and deployed per, based on the machine learning, based on the training server configuration. Detect PLC tags for arriving vehicle, for example. Uh, when vehicle arrives, device-wide workflow engine is triggered to determine based on the model and the option of inspection model to execute. Device-wise uh, smartphone app is triggered to capture an image, like a handheld device. Inferencing is performed, inspection rule. rules are evaluated, and results are then displayed on a smart device. The inspection workflow executes storing results on the server and performs any corrective actions uh, configured. Turn on warning lights, for example, alert operators via messages, stop the machine, or create a work order on a ticketing system like SAP, uh, SAP PM or IBM Maximum. So an example would be a portable AI visual inspection to use a handheld a smart device. Uh, the visual model training is of course performed prior to the deployment of the solution. Models can be automatically updated and deployed per flow of the machine learning based on the configuration. Device-wise monitors a PLC tag for uh, arriving vehicle, for example, when the vehicle arrives, a device workflow or trigger is, is uh, run and determines based on the model and the options which inspection model to execute. Device-wise, a smartphone app is triggered to capture the image, inferencing is performed, inspection rules evaluated, and results are then displayed on the smart device. The inspection workflow executes storing results on the server for warranty and performs any corrective actions configured. Turn on a warning light, alert an operator via a message, stop the machine or create a work order, for example. Here's another example of device-wise visual inspection running on the Boston Dynamics spot controller. The you train and deploy the mission just a couple of hours using device-wise, it's very quick. Using the, the Boston Dynamics uh, spot, robot spot controller, you create the path for spot or the mission and actions to be taken at each of the spot points. For example, capture an infrared image. Once the images are captured, labeled, 
and train images using VI Studio, you configure the triggers for the mission and then modify a display, a dashboard as needed. You run the mission and view the results on a real-time device-wise view dashboard on an iPad, on a PC, on a smartphone. Any web-based uh, system will let you see it. Also, the results can be sent to a variety of external system. For example, create a maximum work order or send an email to a maintenance uh, operator. We can also collect data from PLCs or sensors using device-wise connectivity to further provide insight to the visual inspection process. For example, if a low temperature is visually detected on a hydraulic manifold, SPOT could read the run status bit from the equipment PLC to determine if the machine is idle before creating a maximum work order. Well, enough of PowerPoint. Let's see device-wise AI studio in action. Please, Linear, uh, take it away. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the device-wise Studio VI um, to create projects, annotations, train models, and to run inference. Now, when you open the web browser for the first time, this is what you're going to see. Now, on here, we're going to start by creating a user by going to register, um, and we can create a new user. I'm going to type in a password. And once the user is created, uh, we can now start creating different projects uh, for the purpose of uh, object detection or anomaly detection. So we're going to start by going to projects. And in here, we are going to create a, I'm going to call this one a wheel project or wheels. Um, and in this one, um, we have several options after creating a project. We can upload images, we can import the whole project, export, select different images, um, and annotate um, for the purpose of object detection. We're going to start by uploading a few images. Um, and we have a few wheel images that I'm going to start with those. Um, and once we have those images up, now the next step is going to uh, annotate based on the different objects that we want to find. Now clicking on annotation opens the annotation tool. And now we can start by simply dragging a rectangle around the area that we want to have. And for example, I'm going to call this one a black bolt. I'm going to annotate those who are black bolts. And we can have this one, which I'm going to call this one um, just bolt. That's a different color. And I can go on to the next image and start annotating that as well. This one is the black one. I can specify from the list. And we have the regular bolt. Now we can add as many different labels. For example, if I want to add these as a defect, I can do that as well. We can specify those as well. Now there are some different tools in here. Um, we have the free move that we can just move around. We can undo annotations. Um, we can center the image in case it moved around. Um, we can get some information of the different annotations that we had. Uh, we can just delete the entire annotations from the screen. And we can also see all the images and just by clicking going between each other. Once I'm done with the annotations, for the um, sake of time, I'm not going to annotate the entire images. I'm just going to, for now, save it. Um, and I'm going to go back. And I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to call this New Wheels. For this one, I'm now going to import a pre-defined project that we already had that has all the wheel images with the annotations on them. So if I show you the annotation, you can see already that we have those defects. We have the wrong bolt, the good bolt. Um, we have the different annotations for all the images that we have in this project. Now, once we have that, the next step after annotating the images is to go to the training platform. And in here, 
we this is where we are training the projects that we had and by training it means that we're going to take the set of images with the annotations that we just created and we're going to use them to create a model a model is uh, a file that can then be used when we run what is called an inference meaning that when we take an unseen image we can then um, run the inference on that image and get the results such as location of bolts or defects um, so we can do that so i'm going to start with a new wheels project that we just created or just imported and i'm going to click on start training now when we do that we have several options that pops up for example we have the number of epochs i'm not going to get too technical but we can specify the number of repetitions that we have i'm going to start with 100 for this time uh, we can change the batch size, learning rate. We have some advanced options, which I'm not going to dive into this uh, video. Um, and we also have the training algorithm. Now, this is an important step. We have, at the moment, we have three different algorithms. Uh, we have what is called the CNN, or Convolutional Neural Network, uh, which this one is specifically used for object detection, um, which basically means that on an image, we can look for specific types of objects, like you saw the, the bolts that we had, uh, or defects are, can be labeled, and then we can look or search for those specific types of objects. However, we also have anomaly detection, which is a different use case. We have two of these algorithms. The anomaly detection, meaning that we upload a set of good images, and we're just looking for any type of anomaly that the image can have. It doesn't have to be marked, it doesn't have to be annotated, but it has to be uh, something that is an anomaly uh, on a new image that the model hasn't seen before. We're gonna start with the basic one, which is depth detection after annotating. So I'm gonna pick this one and I'm gonna hit start training. Now, when that happens, uh, we're going to see a graph very shortly that's going to uh, walk through the entire training process where we're going to be able to see the different uh, error rates um, that are going to be uh, um, calculated. Now, the goal is to have the minimum error rate, but it's going to take a few minutes for the training to, to, uh, to be done, but that's it. So now we started the training and we can see those different uh, losses that we have and we're going to hopefully see the graph keep going down now we're going to speed this one up um, because we do have about a hundred epochs it's going to take about a minute or two um, so we're going to speed this one up and hopefully you're going to see the uh, classification loss which is the blue line going way way uh, below the other two And the training is now completed. And once it is complete, we can see some data on the training, such as the uh, the different losses, the final losses that we got. We can see some um, graphs that are relevant if you want to measure or compare the results of this training compared to others. Um, and now we got this new model file or model name that is the new wheels, the project with a timestamp dot pt which uh, stands for pytorch and now if i go back to the models i can see this model that we just created in here um, now before continuing a few things that we need to pay attention to that if i go and click on the username that we have um, so first we need to make sure that the program is licensed right now we do have um, the edge license and the studio license active we have an API key, which will be used later on with uh, DeviceWise. And we can see different logs, and we also get this GPU information, uh, which we can then see the, uh, num the memory allocation, the serial number, and the, uh, the device name, uh, just to make sure that we do have a proper GPU, uh, which is recommended for training. Um, now, after we're done with the training, now we... Um, we want to load the model. This is the first step. Um, by loading the model, meaning that we are um, making this model available um, for the GPU to, to use that on the future inference. So I'm going to click on load. And now it is loaded. Um, and we can do several actions after that. So of course, we can delete it if you don't want it. 
Um, we can test the inference, which I'm going to do now, and we can also export. Um, and if there are other models that we created before, we can then export or upload the models um, that if you want to have a model uh, to transfer a model from one machine to another, we can do it easily by uploading it in this uh, with the, the upload model button. So we're going to start by testing the inference. I'm going to upload an image, which this one is an unseen image that we have. I'm going to use this one, and I'm going to click on Infer. And as you can see now, uh, the text is a little bit small, but basically we get this uh, result with including the uh, annotation on it, which we see we have really high percentage of confidence. So we have this good bolt uh, with a 90.7% uh, confidence. And we have those missing bolts that were already also annotated, and we have these other good bolts. Um, so I'm going to upload a different image for this example. Let's use this one. So in this one, for example, we have a few defects that we were able to detect. Um, we have with a pretty high percentage rate or confidence rate, uh, we have those different good bolts, we have a different defect, we have the wrong bolts. Um, so we were able to find and to get a pretty good results by training, which took us about two minutes of training. Um, so we know the model is good. Now what we can do next is to export. So by clicking on the export, there are different types of format that we can use for the export. We can export as a PyTorch, which is the default file that we're using. However, we can also export as a CoreML file, which is used by Apple, or Onyx, um, which is becoming more and more popular uh, recently. Uh, so we can export with all, to all of these formats. Um, so that's that for now. For the next step, we're going to use device-wise or show the integration of device-wise and device-wise view uh, with the current VI solution. Thanks, Lanier. Whenever you're ready for the second part here, just uh, go ahead. OK, so in this section of the video, I'm going to walk through the integration of device-wise with the visual inspection solution that we have. So continuing from where we left off, so we had these uh, projects and we have the new model that we just trained um, and we did manage to test the inference and see the proper results. But now we're going to walk through how to use device-wise um, and device-wise logic with device-wise view to uh, run inference, upload images um, and see a proper results on uh, device-wise view. So initially, when installing the after installing the device-wise uh, workbench, we need to install the package, and I assume you already have that installed. And once you install the VI package, you can go to this visual inspection tab. Now, in this one, we need to specify two different things. The first one is the IP address where the node, the VI, is currently running. And now we have this one running on the 172.218. Um, this is where I'm pointing to from the workbench. And for the API key, we need to go uh, on the system, on the endpoint that you want the, the workbench to point towards. You need to go to the user settings. And in here, you can copy this API key and use that with this uh, panel. Once you establish a connection, you can start running uh, inference and uh, you can create different triggers that can talk to this VI endpoint. So we're going to start by just uh, walk you through by creating a simple trigger. And once you open this uh, trigger builder, you see on the bottom we have now the visual inspection. Inside we have two different actions. The one is the file upload and the other one is the inference. Let's start with the file upload first. I'm going to drag it in. And of course, immediately I'm going to close it up. Now, inside this block of this file upload, we can see the two different projects that we currently have. If I go back to the website, you can see we have these two different wheels and new wheels. In this case, I'm going to upload an image to the wheels. For the input, I specify the image path, and I'm going to use a simple image that I have, which is an image of a hazelnut. And I'm going to specify the results to a local variable. And that's it. Now I'm going to name this file upload. And let's 
change this to on demand and validate and save. Now I'm going to start and because we have the, the workbench now connected to the uh, VI via the API key, it should now run the upload and we should see the wheels with the new image that we just added. And theoretically I can fire it again. Um, and if I re-render it, I can see the, the more images that are being uploaded, meaning that uh, we are succeeding in uploading. So this means that device-wise can, uh, can now be used as a platform to upload images. If you have a camera connected to it, you can easily uh, point to that camera, take a picture and upload that to a set of images that then can then be used um, for uh, VI, meaning that we can then run an annotation um, and I can take the image that we just had and specify some different annotations based on the image that we just uploaded from the uh, workbench. Now, this is the first part. The next trigger that we have that you saw was the inference. So I'm gonna drag that over again. Um, I'm gonna set it again on demand, call this one inference test. Um, and I'm gonna open this block. And inside of it now, we see different um, options. The first one is the model name. And this one, if we go back to the model page, we see we just have this one that we created. Um, and this is the one that we see right here. Uh, under the inference location, we have two different options. The first one is the local, meaning that um, we are running the workbench, or sorry, we're running device-wise and the VI on the same location. So the image does not need to be sent um, over some protocol. It can just, the, the uh, VI can just reference the image because it's on the same location. Um, however, when it's in remote, the workbench and device-wise can send the image onto the VI, the server, the endpoint where the VI is located. Uh, so for this case, I'm going to keep it remote, even though we're, we are running on the same location, um, because I do want to get the base64 image at the end. Um, so for the input image, I'm going to, again, one more time, um, use an image that I know that we have. Let's... I'm going to put the image and on the output. Now, the inference result, this is where we're getting back a JSON um, with all the data of the inference. It can be the, uh, um, the labels data, the boxes that we have, um, any results, if it can be a defect, if it, uh, the, the, the number of defects or uh, the colors of the annotations and, and so on. We got all this uh, as part of the JSON that we're getting back. So this one, I'm going to set it into this uh, just uh, um, inference result variable that I already defined before. Now I'm going to save this one. Um, oh, and of course I forgot under input, we have the, these uh, other options. The first one is the generate caption. The generate captions means that do we want to draw on the returned image, the captions, the results, do we want to have an image that we're getting back with the results already on the image? Or we can use the JSON, the output, to draw the results on the image. In this case, I'm going to set this to false. I'm not, I, I don't want to get an image with the results on the image itself. And we have a confidence threshold, meaning that um, we have um, different confidence level. So we can say anything that is below 70%, 80%, or any number that you want, do not show it. So in this case, I'm not going to um, have any value to it. I'm going to keep it like so. So now I'm going to validate one more time, and I'm going to save. So now we have it up and ready. So the next step, I'm going to start it, and I'm going to now fire the trigger. And you see, we got the results back. 
um, we got a success and we we see this the speed is 70 millisecond which is very very fast however it can be faster even if we're using local in this case we're using remote as reminding you but it, using local can even make it faster Now, the question is, what can we do with these uh, results? What can we do with the JSON that we just got? So if I go on to the, um, the variables and this one that I just uh, referenced, so I can see we get this long JSON. It's a very long JSON, it includes all the different options that we have. Um, but in order to see that, the next step would be to use the device-wise view package um, and for that, I'm going to just open a new tab. And I'm going to now create a new gallery. And for this one, I'm going to call it device-wise VI. And within it, I'm going to create a new display. I'm going to call this inference. And now, once we have the new uh, device-wise view up and running, we can see we have a new widget uh, under Tele Centurion AIML which is the visual inspection. And I can click on it to create a new object on the widget panel. And here I can now assign a variable to this widget. And in our case, I'm gonna use the one, the, the inference result variable that you saw that I set to be the output. I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna change the update rate in millisecond to be 200 milliseconds. And there you go. And we got the result back and you can see that we got the inference including the different colors we got the annotation of it we got missing bolt good bolt and we got the different colors now uh, because we can make it much faster or the inference is, is is very quick we can have a trigger that is constantly firing with the different images and for that we have this trigger and it is a pretty heavy trigger with a lot of blocks in it. But basically what it does, it's every half a second, it search within an, an, a set of images of 100 images that we have, and it randomly selects an image and then runs an inference on that image. Um, similar to what can be in a factory line where you have parts that are going through uh, some conveyor belt and you have a camera that can then take a picture on each of these parts and you have different pictures. Uh, so from this uh, set of about 100 images, unseen images, um, we can then get something like so. And if you see, this is a panel, I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. Um, and this is a panel that is the results of the trigger that you just saw. So every half a second, we take a new picture a new image and we run an inference and based on the result we have some logic that if we see any defect we're pre basically saying there is a defect and we can then run some logic on device wise um, to have some sort of uh, desired outcome we can stop the line we can do any action um, either on device wise or outside that we want to have uh, so this is a very nice example of the possible use case that we have um, and of course, uh, the device-wise VI and the inference can be used uh, not just for defects, we can count the number of bolts, we can count um, how many defects, um, how many parts went through um, the, the line that we have, um, and we can basically do uh, uh, any number of uh, uh, operations using the VI solution that we currently have. Um, so this is all for now. and. That's it, thank you. Great, um, thank you so much, Lanier, for walking us through that. Um, now, audience, before we get to the questions, I am going to drop a quick poll on your screen. Uh, if you'd like to have one of our experts contact you, please respond here on the poll and we will be sure to have somebody reach out to you directly. Uh, we do have time for some questions now, and there is still time to ask a question, so please feel free to submit um, using the box at the bottom of your screen there, and we will do our best to cover it. All right, so let's just dive into our, our first question here. Um, David, how is Telet uh, VI solution different from maybe other solutions out there? Sure. Um... The main difference is that the Telet solution is an integrated solution. 
uh, not only we have the machine learning visual inspection, but we can also integrate to sensors and PLCs and devices on the shop floor and provide visualization and exchange information with IT systems. So it's one platform for everything. The competitors provide vertical solutions where you need to stitch the connectivity to an IT system. You need to write code to talk to uh, PLCs, for example, or RFID readers. So it's extra, it's custom code, is hiring programmers, for example. Uh, so it's time to market, time to solution is a lot longer. Ours is a very integrated, ready to go uh, solution tool. Great, thank you. Um, next question, um, and we actually got this a couple times. Um, where can TELET visual inspection be installed? It's a great question. Um, TELET uh, VI product suite can be installed on any Jetson based GP, NVIDIA Jetson based GPU system, and there's many vendors making system based on Jetson, but it can be installed on enterprise grade systems. Uh, with uh, NVIDIA GPUs, uh, for example. So you go from a small end device to an enterprise grade device. There are some, uh, there is some hardware out there that integrates the optics and the GPU in one. So you could basically install it on a camera and a smart AI camera. So it scales from very little to enterprise grade systems. Great, thank you. Um, Next question, um, what does Telet VI do about my data? Um, also got another question, how secure is my data? That's a very important question. Because you could install device-wise on-prem, your data is yours, you secure it, uh, you control the access to it. We do not require anything on the cloud, so your data is as secure as on your premises. Uh, our competitors require a lots of model training on the cloud, which means your data with possibly defects end up in the cloud, and that's kind of a security exposure. So you control uh, your data, so it's secure by definition because you install it, you run it, and your images and your results are within your enterprise. They never leave your facility, so they are secure. Great. Um, next question I have, um, how often do you update the models? Uh, it's up to you. Uh, up to uh, you, uh, if you could build, if you create a model and you need to make a small update, you could then do an incremental update on the model. It's, it's your call. Um, but you could do the update of the model on a schedule. Uh, it could be done basically any time. Of course, the more you train, uh, the, the the GPU will be busy training, but you could do it at any time as needed. Uh, so you just mentioned training, and then we did have a question. Um, what is the typical training period? Uh, it varies. Depend, depends on the complexity, uh, if it's anomaly detection or ob object detection, but typically uh, a few minutes. Uh, anywhere from two to five minutes, you have a model trained. Great. I believe that's all the time that we have for today. Um, audience, I want to thank you again for joining us. Uh, please be sure to check your inboxes in the coming days for that replay link if there's anything you'd like to check out again. Um, thank you, David and Lanier, uh, for your time today. And thank you again for everybody who joined us. We hope you have a great one.